Hello everyone, welcome to astrologynewsreport.com. Today is January 12th, 2014. Presenting an alternate view of world events as seen through the lens of Vedic astrology. I'm Ron Berger. And I'm David Anton. Let's take a look at the week that was. The polar vortex was upon us. A term now all too familiar to your average Joe and Jane. But it is well known among weather persons. And it is the reason for the uncommon occurrence of recently really extreme low temperatures. A blast of unusual weather that shocked the middle and eastern states last week, making normal everyday operations impossible, if not deadly, in many parts of the country, with 187 million affected. In astrological terms, this was a manifestation of the Mars-Uranus opposition. Being the planet of sudden, unexpected events, Uranus is synonymous with disruption. Add on the energy of Mars with its signification of destruction, and we can see that business as usual becomes problematic. Ironically, some places in America had lower temperatures than some regions of the planet Mars. Oh. So it practically goes without saying, thousands of airline flights were canceled, Schools and businesses were closed. Governors and mayors pleaded with people to stay off the road. But mercifully, the death toll was very low when you consider how large an area of the states were covered. And so, um, a week ago, we noted how Jupiter and Venus were going to be opposite each other while both were simultaneously retrograde. And this past week, we got some of the outcomes of this unusual planetary pattern. Jupiter is the planet of beliefs therefore ideology and when Jupiter is retrograde it is as with all planets close to the earth therefore strong for results but backwards the Congress critters got back to work last week and right away we saw the power of backwards ideology as they draw up the battle lines for January Venus on the other hand is the planet of values and when it is retrograde we get powerful backwards values so there we have it, powerful backwards ideology and dogma versus powerful backwards values, playing out in the never-ending ring-around-the-rosy game of one-upsmanship, which now passes for lawmaking at the highest level of our vaunted democratic system. <laughs> and the first big item on the agenda will be the federal budget. Hey, wait a minute, I thought that all was settled from last December when they came out with that much ballyhooed compromise. Yeah, but that was only an outline for a budget. Now they have to get down to the nitty-gritty details, the line-item sausage-making that the Congress is so famous for. So with Venus and Jupiter both retrograde, mostly we get a return to the past with the same tiresome public quarrels the kabuki theater debt ceiling showdowns and the can kickings and other evasions of responsibility right speaking of jupiter retrograde that's the planet of wisdom going back over past ground and we did get an ideological jupiterian new book a memoir looking backwards written by former defense secretary robert gates where his own viewpoint and palpable disgust prompts him to f severely criticize his old boss, President Obama. What he had to say about Obama was nothing compared to what he dumped on Obama's VP. Mr. Gates slammed Joe Biden, saying Biden has been wrong on nearly every major foreign policy and national security issue for the past 40 years. Oh, that is truly vicious. All right. Another feature of the Jupiter opposite Venus pattern is that Jupiter is the planet of laws and judges, opposing Venus the planet of love and marriage. And so last week we had another go <laughs> at the same-sex marriage issue. Oh, no. <laughs> On deck this time, the state that made polygamy famous, Utah, which <laughs> now joins a list of other states wrestling with the legal issues of same-sex couples who want the right to get married in the state where they reside. After the Utah State Supreme Court found the existing laws violated equal protection, the state itself went to the federal court who agreed with the state court. 
Next, the state appealed to the Supremes, who issued a stay, which put a halt to the marriages, and then Utah went ahead and declared the nearly 900 marriages of same-sex couples to be invalid. And then the Federal Justice Department recognized the already married 900 same-sex couples. Is this is this law or a tennis match? I don't know. I but, don't the, know. But, but, the, but the plot is thickening, that's yes, for sure. Yes, of course. Now, getting back to that Mars-Uranus opposition again, regarding that planetary pattern's propensity to produce unexpected events, even something tantamount to crisis, Kraft Foods announced that there will be a shortage of their very popular soft cheese, Velveeta, which is used in the American version of nachos, a must-have dish for Super Bowl parties, putting that upcoming national tradition in serious jeopardy. Oh my God, a Super Bowl crisis? Excuse me while I run out to my neighborhood mini-mart. First it was my creamy Twinkies that were under threat. <laughs> Now this brazen assault on the nation's number one delivery system for comfort food? Say it isn't so! All right. <laughs> All right, here's another Mars-Uranus out of the ordinary event. Dennis Rodman, self-appointed goodwill ambassador to North Korea, brought ten of his NBA brothers out of retirement to the Hermit Kingdom for an exhibition game in celebration of the birthday of baby-faced dictator Kim Jong-un. Oh, well, more on Mr. Rodman in part three of this week's report. Right. And uh, in the Uranus-Mars accident and violence category, well, last week there were almost too many to list, including two U.S. military helicopter crashes, another oil train wreck, a carjacking that left a Venezuelan beauty queen dead, a chemical spill in West Virginia that contaminated drinking water for 300,000 people, and the revelation that the number of Target customers whose personal data was stolen during the holiday shopping season is now over 100 million. Geez, Ron, that Mars Uranus opposition sure brings out a lot of bad Buddha. Hmm. Okay. And finally, I can't leave this one out. Governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie, has been all over the news last week due to some shenanigans that took place back in September regarding Christie's staffers engineering a deliberate shut down on the George Washington Bridge, which screwed up traffic for four days, ostensibly in order to embarrass a local mayor, a Democrat, Mark Sokolich, who had refused to support the Gov in his re-election bid. This is now ballooned up to the level of a full-blown political scandal, including calling it Bridgegate, huh. and it grows more legs day by day. Since we did Governor Christie's chart a couple of months ago, we decided to check back and see what's cooking. Yeah, when we originally analyzed his chart after he got reelected as governor, it was to see what his chances were as a 2016 presidential candidate, which at that time didn't appear to be all that promising, astrologically. Anyway, let's take a look at his current problem. All right. Go governor Christie is now in his moon major period, and Jupiter sub-period. The moon represents the public, and by being placed in his seventh house, it shows that he is in the public eye. But his Jupiter sub-period brings on a mixed bag of karma, because Jupiter rules his eighth house, which is the house of chronic problems and scandal and humiliation. And Jupiter brings that eighth house energy to his tenth house, the House of Actions in Public. Another factor to consider is his sixth house, which is both the house of employees, i.e. His, his staff, as well as being the house of problems. This is where Saturn and Rahu have been transiting last year, two major malefics, and both representing lower chakra-type characters. Anyway... Uh, after weeks of denying that there was a problem, and after a whole bunch of incriminating emails had surfaced, Christie went into full damage control last week, prostrating himself full length in front of the public, over and over again saying how sad he was, that he'd been betrayed, that he was just as shocked as we were, and yada yada yada. Of course, what everyone wants to know 
will this whole kerfuffle ruin his chances of being a presidential contender? Well, as it has been said many times before, six months is an eternity in politics, and the public's political memory is even shorter than that, and the primaries are still two years away. Uh. And in Christie's chart, since Jupiter is activating his eighth house, which is also regeneration and rejuvenation, I don't think we can count Mr. Christie out just yet. All right. Well, surely we will be checking back with Governor Christie's chart in the future. And so we conclude this week's Review of the Week. Be sure to click in with us next week.